Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the theoretical background for the so-called disjoint set or the union fine data structure. So let's get started. So okay, what is this disjoint set? It is also known as the union fine data structure and it is a data structure to keep track of a set of elements partitioned into a number of disjoint, so non-overlapping subsets. This data structure supports three main operations, the union, the find, and the make set operations. These joint sets can be represented with the help of link lists, but usually we implement it with the help of a tree-like structure. And okay, you may pose the question that what does this joint set have to do with minimal spanning trees, cross-curl algorithms, and so on? Basically, in cross-curl algorithm, it will be very, very useful. This data structure can boost up the running time of the cross-curl algorithm, because with these joint sets, we can decide in approximately order one, so constant time complexity, whether two vertices are in the same set or not. And basically, it is very important. Okay, so what about the make set operation? These operations, by the way, are very, very easy to implement. The make set is going to assign a distinct set to each of the items. We are going to talk about vertices, so sometimes I'm going to say vertices. So we have the X, it can be an item, it can be a vertex of a graph, whatever. But basically, we set the parent to be itself. So we create a distinct set to all the items. What about the find? The find is going to get an item, an X, and if the parent is equal to itself, so the X parent is equal to X, then we return the X, and else we return the find X parent. So we are going to call this find method recursively on the parent. And several items can belong to the same set. It's very important. And we usually represent the set with one of its items, basically the representative of the set. And that's why if the X parent is equal to itself, it means that basically this is the root node. As I said earlier, we usually implement this data structure as a tree-like structure. And it has a root node. And basically, the root node is the representative. So no matter what item we would like to find, it's going to return the value of the root node. This is how these joint sets work. So that's why when we search for an item with the find operation, then it's going to return with the representative. What does it mean? It means that we have the disjoint set, for example, with 4, 10, 14, 128, 55. These are the items in the disjoint set. In this case, we are not going to talk about vertices in a graph. It's going to store integers. For example, the representative of the disjoint set is going to be 4. Then if we run the find operation on the 4, we would like to find the 4. Then because the representative is 4, it's going to return 4. What if we would like to find a 10? We have been talking about that it's going to return with the representative. So it's going to return 4. What if we are looking for the 55? Because these joint sets are going to return with the representative, it's going to return 4, and so on. So basically, this is how these joint sets work. Okay. What about the union? We have the union on the X and the Y, and basically, we are going to find the root for the X, the root for the Y, and basically, we merge them together. So the X root that parent is going to be the Y root. So the union operation is merged two disjoint sets together by connecting them according to the representatives. Okay, so far so good. But then several problems arise. For example, this tree-like structure can become unbalanced. And I'm not sure whether you are familiar with data structures, but that's why binary search trees are not a good data structures, because they can get unbalanced. And when they are unbalanced, then the operations is going to be very slow. So we have to rebalance them, and this is why AVL trees and red black trees came to be. And this is the same for here. We come to the conclusion that this tree-like structure can become unbalanced. So we have several options. For example, the union by rank. 
So we always attach the smaller tree to the root of the larger tree. So the tree will become more balanced and that's why the operations will be faster. What kind of operations? For example, the find operation. Then the second option is the pulse compression. We usually use both of these solutions at the same time. So union by rank plus pulse compression. Basically this pulse compression flattening the structure of the tree. We set every visited node to be connected to the root node directly. Why is it good? Because we can end up asymptotically with an ORDO1 constant time complexity algorithm as far as the find operation is concerned. So what about the rank? The rank is basically the depth of the tree. We have the leaves nodes, it is the rank is zero, then the parents of the leaves nodes have the rank one, then the parent of the parent of the leaves nodes have the rank two, and basically the rank of the set is equal to the rank of the representative or the rank of the root node. And in this case, this set has the rank 2. So we attach the smaller tree to the larger one. It means we attach the tree with smaller rank to the tree with higher rank. Why is it good? Because in this case, the tree is not going to be as balanced as we do in the opposite way. So, for example, we have two disjoint sets, A and B, and C, D, E. And we would like to merge them. Of course, we have to merge them in the way that we have to attach the tree with smaller rank to the tree with highest rank. Okay, and this is the way how we saw it, we are going to attach the AB set to be the left child of the root node or the representative of the other disjoint set. What about the path compression? This is basically the modified find method. We are looking for the X. And if the x parent is not equal to the x, which means that this is not the root node, this is not the representative, we are going to set the parent to be the find of the x that parent. And basically this is the recursive method call. So we are going to recursively set the parent to be the representative. I think it is a very, very elegant code. On the other hand, it is not so easy to read it, but anyways, it is a very, very elegant recursive method call. And basically, we set every vertex parent to be the representative until we bump into the representative itself. And then we return the exit parent. Okay, so basically we have this tree-like structure, this disjoint set. As I said earlier, we can represent disjoint sets with the help of tree-like structures. And for example, I would like to find the C. Because of the path compression, I'm going to call the find method recursively on the parent of C, on the B, and I come to the conclusion that the parent of B is the representative itself. So I'm going to attach this C to be the child of the representative directly. Why is it good? Because the next time I'm looking for the C, I can find it very easily and I can return with the representative. It's very, very important to know that whenever I call this find on C or B or D, all of them will return with the representative because this is how these join sets work. Whenever I call the find method on an item, it's going to return not the value of the item, but the value of the representative. So basically the root node in this case. Okay, what if I call, for example, the find D? I'm going to call the find recursively on the parent, which is the B, and the parent of B is the representative itself. So basically, we just have to rearrange the D vertex and set it to connect directly to the representative. Why is it good? Because this is why path compression came to be. Whenever we would like to find the D again, it's going to take ORDO1, so constant time complexity, to return with the representative. It's very, very important and very, very useful in Kruskal algorithm. Okay, so just to summarize again, why is it good? Because the next time we want to find a C or find a D, it will take ORDO1 time because they are the direct neighbor of the representative. So the algorithm will be faster because of the path compression as well as because of the rank. Okay, so what about the applications of the disjoint set? 
Basically, it is used mostly in classical algorithm implementation. So we have to check whether adding a given edge to the minimum spanning tree would form a cycle or not. This is how classical algorithm works. We are going to talk a lot more about it in the coming videos. But for checking this, the union find data structure is extremely helpful because we can check whether a cycle is present or not in the graph in asymptotically ordo one constant time complexity. And you may pose the question that, okay, why is it asymptotically ordo one? Because of the path compression, these nodes and vertices will be connected to the representative directly. And that's why next time it's going to take ordo one time complexity to find them. And basically that's why we say that asymptotically, it takes ordo one time complexity to check whether there's a cycle in the classical algorithm or not. Thanks for watching.